Hey guys, Reed here. Today, I want to show you how to create this unique KPI card that includes a value, conditionally formatted status bar that you see in the middle, and a details description below it, including some KPI icons. I came up with this concept based on a client request from a recent project, and I wanted to share this technique with all of you. So let's hop into Power BI and get started. So the cards themselves consist of three primary components. There's the value that we have here on the top, in the middle is a status bar that changes color, in this case from either red to green, depending on a criteria. And then there's the title and a completed section at the bottom that's really a series of concatenated values using a DAX measure that's returning a text value, including this little down symbol as well that just helps to show the direction of the data. And if you watch, as we make a slice of selection, we can see that based on certain months or other criteria, these values can change and if it's positive, the triangle goes up, this turns to green, and if it's negative, down and red. And there's a lot of ways to customize this as far as actually having different colors that you might want for the bar itself or different text outputs. But these are just the examples that I needed based on the business requirements that I had. But I thought this technique was pretty cool, so that's why I wanted to share it with all of you. Now you might be wondering how I made this or even asking if this is a custom visual. In fact, what this is, if I open the selection pane over here, this is a series of two visuals that have been merged together as far as putting them close to each other. So they appear to be one visual, but I was able to do it with two different visuals. You might have seen this technique similarly before when I did my Sparkline KPI card. If you haven't seen that yet, I will link you to the video over here on the right. But if we open up the KPI cards group section in here, there are two other groups, completed KPI card that we see here. And if I open this up, that's actually two different objects. There's an object right here at the top. There's also an object down at the bottom. And what these are, are two different objects that have essentially, like I said, been placed next to each other and then grouped to make the appearance of one visual. Now, before I show you exactly how this is made, I wanna first mention that I originally created this with three different visuals. But the more visuals you have on the page, the slower your report runs because it has to render each individually. So I did figure out a way to do it with only two, but I want to show you the performance impact. So if I open up Performance Analyzer, I click Start Recording, refresh the visuals on the page. My completed visual is the visual here for 921, and as well that one on the bottom completed down here. So you have about 500 and 900. And that's actually running a little slow at the moment. Let me go ahead and clear and try this one more time. That's more typically what I see. Sometimes there's a bit of noise as far as the milliseconds it's actually reported, but very commonly when I've ran this test, I get about three to 350 for both of them, equaling you know, a total of about seven to 800 all around. Now, if I come over to my other page where I've actually created each of these with three different elements instead of two, my completed card, if I open this up, three different objects that were required to make this, not just two. So let's try this clearing again. All right, now taking a look, we have the completed line, there's 300. We also have the completed value, that's 270, almost 300, plus the completed value down here. So that's over now one second required for that. So that's a difference of about 20 to 40% in terms of speed for rendering. So I'm not gonna show you how to make the one on this page, because again, that requires three objects. Let me walk you through step-by-step step how I made the one on this page, which is faster. I'm gonna clear this, close the performance analyzer pane. Go ahead and actually copy and paste this out onto my canvas. And let me show you what the two objects in here are. Open my selection pane and I'm actually gonna ungroup these. There we are. So I'll start with this simple one. This bottom card down here, all this is, is a standard single value card that has a title and a measure that's returned into it. So the title itself is what you see as the word completed. That's simply just returning the title there with a white background and the measure in here completed text, that is just a little bit of DAX magic that I have done. Let me go ahead and show you that formula. Open that up and you can see that in here. There's just a series of variables that basically all return a result. It's just a concatenation of a series of values and numbers. Now the goal of this video is not to explain the DAX as much. I have other videos that do that. And I'll walk through some measures a little bit more thoroughly in my KPI Sparkline video. You can get the link to that video over on the right or down in the description below. But essentially, it's just a concatenated series of text that is returned as the value down here. That's the simple bottom card. Now the clever piece is the thing that I have up here at the top. Notice that that's not an actual visualization as far as from the visualizations pane. What that is, is a button that I have created. 
And the clever thing comes in the fact that on my fill here, I have a fill color that's using a measure to return a series of values in there. So if you notice in here, conditional formatting, I have formatted that by field value. Now I'm not gonna go into a lot of depth on field values themselves or the functionality of this. You're welcome to click the learn more button. I also have a video that talks about this specific feature. So again, I will link you to that over on the right or in the description, but you can see that there's a measure that I've created called completed KPI colors. And in this case, that's only returning one of two colors, red or green. But let me go ahead and show you that here on my fields pane, just so you can see the measure. And that's really all it's doing is it's doing a check. I have two variables declared for the color green as a hex color, color red. And the result is simply if this value greater than or equal to zero, return green, otherwise return red. So that is the small portion of this. If I close these down so we can have a bigger screen here, the fill portion is actually filling down the object or the button itself, but I've sized it. So it basically creates this really thin sliver of a line that when I nest this on top of it, basically becomes a gauge bar right in here. And the title is actually another clever trick in this. So if I come over to the visualizations, I go to the my title section, notice that my title is a dynamic value that is also returning a DAX measure where you can dynamically title things. And again, because I cover so many different topics with my videos, I have a video that will dive further in depth about doing dynamic titling, which is exactly what this is doing here. So I'll link you again to the video over on the right or down in the description. So if we open that up, go to conditional formatting, we will see that there is a field value and a measure that's called completed amount. So let's go ahead and look at the measure. And there's a little bit of a trick to this as well. So what I want you to observe is that I'm not simply returning just the sum of the completed amount. You can't actually put a numerical or date field in a title text option when you're doing conditional formatting. It has to be set as text. So I've wrapped this in a format, put the formatting in here, and that's how I'm able to actually return in the title the numerical value. And the reason I did this is as I said, the more visuals you have on the page, the slower it will take to render all of them at once when the actual report page loads. So previously what I had is three different visuals on this page. I had the value as a single value card. I separately had the button as the red gauge in the middle. And then I had the third visual of another single value card as the bottom. And I wanted to figure out if there's any way that I could get it down from three to two. So that clever technique I did is figuring out how to put the value into the title. And I figured that out by applying a text wrapper to basically convert it to text, which then allows me to put a dynamic title onto that button. And the resulting effect, like I've said, is what you can see here where they change around. It operates very well. And there's a lot of ways to customize this, both in size, and anything else. But I thought it was a really fun technique that I just wanted to pass along to all of you. Thank you so much for watching. And please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. If this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, smash that subscribe and notification button. And last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below.